I've mentioned Linux being more secure than Windows several times in my past videos, but I never really did a deep dive into the reasons why Linux is more secure than Windows or the Mac OS. So the first thing right off the bat is hackers don't really make viruses for Linux. And once you understand the mindset of the most common types of hackers, this really starts to make sense. Most hackers are script kiddies, which basically means that they don't really understand the deep knowledge of systems, networks, and social engineering that is required to be a true hacker. I mean, it's just like with any type of profession, I guess. You're going to have more amateur baseball players than you are professional baseball players because to be a professional, it takes a lot more time and some people might never be able to be a professional no matter how much time or effort that they put into it. So most hackers are going to be script kiddies and script kiddies are the type of people that download some well-known Trojan or possibly generate their own using Metasploit and then they put the program on their teacher's desktop and give it a Google Chrome icon and rename it to Google Chrome and they wait for the magic to happen because a script kitty isn't going to make their own malware and possibly hasn't even heard of Linux themselves. So it's pretty much impossible for somebody at this level of hacker knowledge to really do any damage to a Linux system. So that leaves us with the real hackers and the real malware writers. These guys who wear anonymous masks and the black hoodies and they never leave their parents' basements, they are a huge threat to Linux, right? Well, not really. You see, Linux only makes up about 2% of the desktop market share. And when you write malware, just like writing any other type of program, it typically doesn't work the same way on all operating systems, at least not with the same exact binary. If you want an application for Linux or the Mac OS, you have to generate a binary specifically for it. This is why if you go to most websites that have software for Linux, the Mac OS, and Windows, you'll notice that there's different download links or different pages to download the binary for your specific operating systems. Now, malware authors are typically motivated either by making money this is pretty much the whole point of ransomware, where a hacker will lock your hard drive and only give you the password for paying them a certain amount of Bitcoin. Or the hacker might just want to cause as big of a disruption as possible, either by having a bunch of systems go down, taking out a service, a company, or possibly an entire government. But the idea in both scenarios is to cast as big of a net as possible, the more victims that you can compromise, the more money that can be made, or the bigger the mess that you can create, the better. So the main thing that makes Linux so secure is that it just isn't worth it for most people to actually hack it, since so few people are using it, and the few people that are using it are a bit more tech savvy and less likely to get infected with malware in the first place, not to mention that there's some structural differences between Windows and Linux, which make Linux more secure, which we'll get into shortly. Now, let's pretend for a moment that GNU slash Linux and Microsoft Windows have market shares that are almost the same. They've got the same number of people using it. Would Linux still be more secure? Yes. One of the biggest security issues on Windows which to be fair, Microsoft is trying to fix with the Windows Store, but nobody really uses it, so it's kind of a moot point. But the reason that a lot of malware gets onto a person's PC on Windows in the first place is that when you download software for Windows, you typically just go to a random website, well actually not even going to a random website, typically people go to Google and then they'll download, they'll Google, you know, download, whatever type of app it is that they want to get. And then that is going to take them to a random website for that software. They'll download and install .exe and run it as an administrator. And this is one of the most common things that I found when I was working at Geek Squad, uh, removing viruses for the public, 
is that more often than not, my clients would get malware in this exact way. They would either Google a program they wanted to download, or maybe they would try to look up a news article that they heard on the news earlier to try to read more about it. They get redirected to a page, it gets them to download something, and them not knowing better, they do it, and now their system is compromised. Most Linux users, however, they download their packages either from the terminal or a GUI interface that basically does the same thing as the terminal's package manager. And in order to get malware in here, you would have to get it past the administrators that maintain that specific repository, as well as all of the other users on Linux that are using these programs. Uh, you'd have to get it past them, somehow sneak that malware into there, uh, which is also going to be really hard because all of this stuff is open source. So it would be pretty easy for somebody to just go to the GitHub or wherever the source code for that specific app is and see, oh, this is not what it claims to be, or this has a Trojan embedded within the program and then report it and then the maintainers will fix it. They'll you know, kick it off of the software store, or the repository, or more likely just patch it to remove the malware that is inside of it. And because these software repositories are well integrated into Linux and almost every type of Linux system is going to use some type of software repository and the users actually use them, it's much harder for any type of malware to make it onto your system when you're using Linux in the first place. Now, the thing about downloading malware is that it can't really harm you unless your system is actually vulnerable to the malware, which is where the real problem lies with Windows and Linux shines bright because a lot of these exploits take advantage of vulnerabilities that are in the kernel. Now we know that the Linux kernel is open source, which means that if you, sitting here watching this video right now, were to discover a bug in the Linux kernel, you could patch it yourself, assuming that you know the proper programming languages, or you could report it, and then somebody who does know the proper languages could take care of it. And then they'll put in a pull request for your fix or that other person's fix to be included in the next Linux kernel release, which comes out quite frequently. But in Windows, the kernel is locked down. And because Windows is basically the corporate operating system, a lot of these kernel bugs really can't be fixed because then they would break legacy systems, old corporate systems from decades ago that companies have paid Microsoft quite a bit of money to ensure that Windows will continue working with their systems. And this is also why I generally think that open sourcing your code is the best method to make sure that it is secure. Because if you try to develop a secure piece of software in a closed source system, you are essentially betting that you or your corporation or organization knows better than the entire rest of the world. And more often than not, you would be wrong to actually make that bet. Now the final reason that I'll give here why Linux is a more secure OS, and don't think that this is truly the final reason, it's just the last one that I'm going to give for this video, feel free to comment more reasons down below. But the access control that Linux has is far more sophisticated than that on Windows. On Microsoft Windows, you either are or you aren't an administrator. Now, we do have normal users and guest users and root users on Linux, but Linux also has file permissions. And the cool thing about these file permissions is that you simply cannot execute something. Like a, a program can't actually run, whether it's a Python program, a C program, or whatever. Uh, it can't run until you give it execute permissions. So if you're a big brain Linux user, you just simply wouldn't allow malware to even be allowed to execute on your system in the first place. But if you're a small brain Linux user, then I guess this is still something that you would have to watch out for. So that's it for this one, guys. Be sure to share the video, like, subscribe, 
and tick the notification bell so that you know when new videos are being released. Peace out.